air tanker became a practical working tool. Many kinds of scientific experiments were conducted and many chemicals tested. From field tests, we learned the importance of the safe height for a drop. Field evaluation of trial passes helped to determine the right amount and density of retardants. The length and width of the pattern influenced the design of the drop gate to allow the agents to cascade out with split-second timing. Scale models of the drop gate helped the engineers study the effects of airspeed, wind drift, and topography on an airdrop. We found out that when we used bentonite, it was necessary to add a pink dye so that the drop could be easily seen. One of the drawbacks of this colored bentonite was that it did not remain fully effective after it had been on the ground for several hours. When suppressants such as water were tested from the air, they were found to be capable of knocking down flames if dropped directly on the fire. Research prepared the way for efficient use of this new tool. Air tankers can be used to advantage in backcountry areas where ground access is slow and painstaking. It's up to the ranger to carefully define these areas which are primarily air tanker attack zones. His maps become a work, a part of the forest fire plan. From the moment a fire is sighted, the program goes into action. At the airport, the ship is loaded with retardant and specific written information about the location, bearing, and distance to the fire are given to the pilot. Final instructions are confirmed. During the briefing, the crew prepares the plane for takeoff. And within minutes, the air tanker is on its way. Following directions, the pilot locates the fire from the air and prepares for initial attack. Success or failure still depend on this key man. From his background, training, experience, and judgment, he appraises the direction of fire spread, the probable drift of the airdrop, the type of cover, and the terrain, always looking for natural barriers and openings in the canopy. After he sizes up the situation, he makes the drop. Perfect. But there's other work to be done because airdrops alone cannot put out a fire. Sometimes we use smoke jumpers together with air tankers for initial attacks in inaccessible areas. This team action has proven very effective. Following airdrops, it takes men on the ground to finish control and do the mop up. On a small fire, such as we've just seen, the big payoff is in the initial attack. The fundamental principles of air tanker attacks are always the same. There's the fire. Initial orders are given through operational channels. A dispatcher's office, a ranger station, or a supervisor's headquarters. Now then, if the fire becomes troublesome, additional personnel and equipment are needed. For example, in severe fire weather, the fire may become too hot and ground crews may be forced back temporarily. In such cases, the fire organization expands to meet the changing situation. But remember this. The essential procedures remain the same. To coordinate the increasingly complex operations, all line suppression activities stem from one man, the line boss. 
He directs all firefighting activities, both air and ground. When two or more tankers are employed, a lead plane is used. The air attack boss in the lead plane receives his orders from the line boss. The air attack boss is also responsible to the line boss for the tactical deployment of all air tankers. The lead pilot follows the orders of the air attack boss at his side. The lead pilot transmits the orders and amplifies them for the tanker pilots. Back at the airport, the mix master provides the aircraft with retardant as needed. On a medium-sized, troublesome fire, here is how air tankers can be used at the elevation of the reported fire, a maximum load of 600 gallons can be taken on a TBM. Everyone works according to plan. All aircraft are logged out and flight controls set up. Over the fire, the lead plane sizes up the situation and the air attack boss establishes communication with the ground organization. Line boss to air attack boss. This is air attack boss. Go ahead. Retardant needed near head of fire. Drop between Grizzly Peak and Broken Knob. 10-4. The lead plane then guides the air tankers in. The lead plane observes the approach and the drop of the air tanker. The ground crew can now return to the job safely, and the line boss advises the air attack boss concerning the accuracy and effectiveness of the drop. The circling lead plane continues to scout the area. If he discovers a spot fire outside the line, contact is then established with the ground and the details are reported. An air tanker is requested, and another drop is made. A portion of the ground crew moves over to the spot fire and wraps it up. The key to this whole operation is good communication, from ground to air, from plane to plane. Now let's see how air tankers are used on large situations. You'll get a better idea of the air attack operation if you first understand the basic organization. On any large fire, the entire activity is headed up by the fire boss. His immediate staff is made up of a service chief, a plans chief, a line boss, and a finance chief, not shown here. We're particularly concerned with the line functions because in an actual fire operation, the line boss is responsible for the tactical deployment of all aircraft. But remember, he's up front near the fire, directing the actual attack. So others in the fire organization assume service and administrative functions. The air officer is accountable to the service chief for all supply functions. The pilots and mechanics look to the air officer for their day-to-day -day job instructions. The air service manager is responsible to the air officer for all ground service operations at the airport. This includes the work of the mix master and his crew. On fires with exceptionally heavy job loads, an air traffic manager may be established in the drop area. While this man is responsible to the air officer for the safe operation of all airborne traffic, he works most closely with the air attack boss in carrying out specific orders, such as setting priorities and aircraft clearances. Now let's go back and review the chain of command as it applies in an actual fire attack. The line boss is responsible for all line suppression activities of a major fire. He's the man who makes the decisions and gives the orders in an air tanker attack. In the lead plane, the air attack boss translates the orders into an effective air tanker operation. And remember, only lead plane pilots give drop instructions to tanker pilots. 
And this may also include the supplemental work of the helicopter. The organization may look a little unfamiliar up here on the chart, but actually in a fire where we all work together as a team, every job falls into place for smooth operation. And here's how it works. Most fires are caught small. A few become troublesome. But occasionally, a big one gets out of control. On the ground, the fire boss is sizing up all the details. He checks the fuels, the extent of the fire, its general behavior, the wind, and critical points of attack. When the fire report is received, the dispatcher fixes the location. Dispatches the ground crew and then logs them out on the pip board. All crews are dispatched without delay. The flight course and distance are plotted from the nearest primary airport to the fire. In this case, the fire danger is extreme. Reinforcements are needed, so the dispatch is strengthened. At the airport, the air service manager in his trailer receives the message from the dispatcher's office. Now is the time to alert the aircraft that may be needed in the operation. The fire boss must decide which is the right tool for the job. He may decide to use one medium tanker for an hour. Or if conditions are different, he may decide to use a D8 bulldozer for 12 hours. At other times, he may decide to use a 10-man crew for a 12-hour shift. Air tankers are obviously the most expensive. The boss has to determine which tool will buy the most work. When the decision is made, the lead plane precedes all the tankers to the fire. The pilots are given specific instructions for the mission during the loading operation. Because fires often occur in rugged areas, special problems are handled according to proven tactics. By using this picture of a 10,000 acre burn as a model, we can demonstrate some of these tactics. Most of the planned line was constructed with conventional tools, but the Northern Division presented special problems. Hand crews were assigned to the Southern Division, which looks good and is under control, except for a short piece of line behind the residence tract. On the east side, tractors worked uphill, completing most of their assignment. On the Western Division, unburned fuels inside the line causes some concern. A burning out crew is assigned to clean it up. The Northern Division is not easily accessible for fire construction equipment. So, the line boss plans to use air tankers along the main divide. On the head, the northwest flank, and in Windy Gap. Other urgent jobs are sure to occur, and the problems will be met as they arise. Nearly everything else hinges on first stopping the head of this fire. So the first drops are here. There are times when everyone has to proceed with caution until it's safe to continue. The fire threatens to cross the flank at the northwest corner. So an air tanker is dispatched and a drop is made to tie in the flank to the ridge. On the southeast corner, two spot fires are reported outside the constructed tractor line as a result of a twister. This one can be picked off without too much trouble. But only a helicopter can get down safely into a box-like canyon and make a precision drop.
always use the right aircraft. Elsewhere at the fire, the saddle is being threatened. In this problem, pretreatment with a retardant ahead of the fire is effective. So, a drop is made. On the west side, the backfiring crew reports some trouble. They've lost their line at one point, but prompt air action picks up the slop over, and the backfiring work continues. On the eastern division, the lead tractor is working in front of the fire. Air tankers are used to keep the crew from being surrounded. With air cover support, this crew is able to continue their assignment. Now the hand line crews on the southwestern sector are in trouble as the fire rolls down behind a residence area. Anxious homeowners watched the progress hour by hour. And once the threat was over, they gratefully spelled out their ground-to-plane message. This is a large, complex, and expensive organization of men and equipment whose sole purpose is to put material you ask for where you want it, when you want it. Use this organization effectively and wisely. But just people are not enough. They must be trained to work as a team, safely. Positive communication is the brittle tie holding the air attack team together. To guarantee the control of a potential large fire is like our national heritage. Mm -hmm.